Welcome back to the Impact Driven Leader Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Dickerhoff. Man, nice to see you. Glad you're here. Whether you're listening, watching on YouTube, wherever you're at, I hope you hit subscribe so that way you get notified. Just go ahead and hit that button. So that way, whenever a new episode comes out, you're aware as well on YouTube. I share uh, a live segment every day, just sharing what I'm learning. So if you subscribe there, you'll also get that stuff. All right. Today... Very special guest, Coach Dar, Darlene Santor. Dar and I got to meet each other, or got to know each other kind of several years ago. Mutual friends had her as a podcast guest on a previous podcast I hosted with my wife, The Impact Makers. Very similar, impact driven. She is the author of the book Bouncing Back, and I'm excited to you know talk to her, have her share about the art of bouncing back. Find your flow to thrive at work and life anytime you're off your game. That is available for pre-order and it releases on February 28th, right after this episode releases. This is what I'm most excited about Dar sharing is your own experiences. And you're gonna hear about experiences and, and kind of these mind bending, like, whoa, that's a lot to go through. And as we discover and we talk about the difference between bouncing and splatting, and why all of us, at some point in life, we will face a challenge and we have the opportunity to bounce from that. I hope you have an enjoyable time listening to this and I'll catch you at the end. Dar, it's so nice to see you. Oh, Tyler, I've been waiting for this, like a Kentucky Derby horse getting out of the game oh. here. Let's go. Oh, man. You know, the, the greatest thing is, you know, just to see your smile <laughs> and knowing what you're so excited about and how deep it is in your heart to serve people. Um, Man, I, I just wish I had more times like this, but I'm glad we're here to chat, to talk about your book, Bouncing Back, but just to talk about the world mm -hmm. we're in now, yeah. all the things and, and correlate it all together and mm -hmm. just have a chance to catch up and serve people. So Sounds good. Let's do it. Sounds good. And so why don't we do this? Why don't we first start with kind of where you're at now? Let's talk about Bouncing Back, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. your book, but as friends, I know that, You've gone through some tough situations in life yep. and maybe everyone listening has not heard that. Mm -hmm. And so what you've gone through the last couple of years between your mm -hmm. strokes, yeah. between your, you know, dad, all the things mm -hmm. like you've had to bounce back. So what you're writing about, what you're sharing with people is not something that you haven't gone through or aren't going through. Right. Right. So why don't you just take and run with that ball? However you choose. So I think. The reason I started to even write this book was because I've helped people bounce back from so much, and but I've also had to endure bouncing back. But I think about this now, and I think it goes back to even my mother. When she was 40 years old, we came from an Italian East Coast family. So you could imagine, it's the Sopranos, okay? And so... She, but she had, a, she had a massive heart attack at 40, mm -hmm. triple bypass at 40 years old, and has to what the pain she had to go through, what she had to do endure at 40 years old. It's just, it's, it's early and it was hard and we didn't have a lot. So she was working three jobs. I saw this woman bounce back like no one else I'd ever seen bounce back. And even my family, like members of my family, my cousin had gone through being burnt as a little kid on one whole side of his body and how he bounced back from that. And my uncle who had like an extremely hard job, drilling concrete every day outside in the East Coast weather, no matter what it was, and he never complained. My mom never complained. My cousin to this day is like the happiest person, and he has grafts obviously all over his body, and he's just full of light. And I'm like, when you see that, Tyler, you're like, what is that? Because that is mm -hmm. human resiliency at its highest level. And I started out my career as an occupational therapist taking care of traumatic brain injured patients. So like your eye, a car accident, motorcycle accident, stroke, whatever, changes their whole life. And I was the one that had to come in as the calming force and help them set their eyes and their hearts on a vision and work at that every day when they wanted to give up because they wanted to give up. I mean, when you first, your whole life turns upside down and you're like, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to yeah. be in a wheelchair or I don't want to live with half my body not moving, whatever it may be. And I was like, we are going to do this. The irony of this is at 25, I go on to see a chiropractor. I've shared this with you before. And when they manipulate my neck, they rip the artery to my brain and I, I have a bleed and I suffer a stroke. 
So the very patients I'm taking care of, I endure suffering symptoms. Thankfully, no paralysis, but I have to endure my first setback, major setback. And I wish I could say that was the only one, but I ended up having three strokes now. The last one was about three or four years ago. And, you know, losing both my parents over the past three years. My dad most recently, just a couple months ago, in the middle of writing this book, going from my third stroke to my mom having a stroke. Well, my mom had one before me, then I had one after. Then she passes away. Then COVID hits and all of, you know, I'm in sports. I coach pro athletes and world leaders, helping them with their mental skills. Well, COVID hits and everything shuts down like it did for all mm-hmm. of us. And I thought I was, I had hit my stride too. I'd really hit a career stride. And I'm thinking, what in the world? And I'm trying to write this book and then start to bounce back better than before. Then ha- go through massive heartache with someone that I thought I'd share my life with. Then my father passes away right after all while I'm writing this. I mean, it was like one after the other, but I say all this because... One, I am definitely at this point much stronger at this part of the game in my life than I was when the first stroke was, have a better wherewithal, and these principles that I was writing about, I was writing because I knew darn well that this is what this works, that this is mm-hmm. what you need to do, and this is what I needed to follow myself, but also help the people around me. And I didn't stop, by the way, coaching and helping people, even when I was going through what I went through. I almost think that helped me because it wasn't just about myself at all. Yeah. But these were the principles that really helped me bounce back. But also because I work on this consistently with everyone, these principles and learning this mental resiliency, this mental fitness does get you stronger. So I'm not going to say life's going to get easier because it's not gotten easier for me. It, it's actually gotten harder. I'm serious. But it doesn't look that hard from the outside because I bounce back faster. I have yeah. a good foundation. And sure, I feel, sure, I hurt, sure, I cry, but I know how to get back up and I know how not to stay there because staying there and getting stuck forever, that's dying. And I don't want to die yeah. while I'm living. Yeah. So let's, let's kind of take that. It's like, explain what is bounce back. Like when, when you're talking to someone and you're like, you know, when you walk through this process or you describe it, what is a bounce back? A bounce back is... There's a lot of things. I think it's the best 30 for 30 story you're ever going to write. It's okay. literally like your ability to take a setback and write the comeback. It's the comeback from the setback. It's the ability to rise back up when you think you can't go again. And it's the ability to see adversity in, in a way that it advances you. Bouncing back is like bouncing forward. It really does propel you forward if you use it in the right way way if you frame it in the right way so bouncing back is your comeback story it's and by the way i don't even mean this in a catastrophe standpoint you don't have to have had a stroke it could be that you were pissed off this morning about a call that you had and you have to get your head on straight to have your meetings to finish out your business day to get come back home with the level set mindset so that you're not taking this all the way through and it's not hurting everyone. Bouncing back is bouncing back to center. And then you can go forward. John Maxwell, and I don't know what book or where it is, and he he talks about the difference between bouncing and splatting. (laughs) And to me, that's kind of like this this element of like, all right, I'm going to choose to, like you said, bounce forward. I'm going to use this moment. I'm going to use the tools that you talk about in the book, but also... Um, choose to do that instead of splatting and let it get me yeah. down. Or as you described, you end up letting it bury you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that happens to so many people is they take circumstances, mm-hmm. you know, that the challenges that you and I have shared that each of us, you know, share that, you know, maybe I don't look back at those experiences as something that could have buried me right? because it didn't, right? but yet it buried a lot of people. Right. Right. And I think that's, that's Power. what we're talking about, the difference. And so, yeah. you know, as, as leaders listening into it, I mean, right now, there's a lot of people right now that are facing this. Okay. They're, they're facing this, oh my goodness, what is life like now? Yeah. Is it, you know, post COVID? Is it just a normal challenge? So where does this process start? 
it really starts. So principle number one, the reason I started with principle number one was called embrace the suck. The military term, we all know embrace the suck because there's no way when you're pissed off about something, hurting about something, in pain about something, at loss for something, that I'm going to come along and I'm going to go, well, these are the ways that you're going to get back and this is what you need to do right now. I need to meet you where you are with what you're dealing with, hear you, see you. You have to meet yourself where you are so that you could feel what you need to feel, collect yourself. And like I said, bouncing back is getting back to center. So you could almost get back to center to start to make a educated choice on what you need to do next. Because like when they're in the middle of battle, they have to stay emotionally neutral to make the best next decision. Sure. So, but you have to get into it and go, okay, we need to assess the situation. What is it? You know, what is the situation? And it usually, excuse my language, sucks at that moment. And you're going, yeah. all right, this is reality. I'm a realistic optimist. I'm very much a realistic optimist. I am not a pure optimist, optimist and I'm not a pessimist. People would see me as an optimist, but I'm very realistic and like, well, what's the situation now? What are we going to do about it? That's where they're like, yeah. Dar, you always think there's a way. Well, there is always a way. There's yeah. always a way. Yeah. It's your mindset. Well, and I think if, if you look at any challenge, any situation that occurs, and if you have the, the mental capacity yeah. of hardwiring yeah. per se to say, okay, I have to recognize the challenges so I can see the opportunities. Yes. Because if I'm not willing to accept the challenges, mm -hmm. then I'm going to delusionally think they're not there. And how can I, you know, I guess try to solve a problem that I have no idea what the problem is. That's right. That's right. Exactly. So we have to embrace it. Yeah. So after we embrace the problem, we say, okay, there's a challenge here. Well, what do you do next? Well, I would start to categorize, you know, the chapters into kind of you go from embracing it to then understanding your hard wiring and seeking a flying feedback. I'm, I'm merging a couple of chapters, but I do that because I need to build an emotional foundation with you. I need you to actually have a foundation. And when stuff is going to happen, which it always is, we're either going in the mess, we're in the mess, or just came out of it. Just like today, I'm working with a hockey player. We're working on him understanding his hard wiring where we had him do an assessment. Who is he? What's his hard wiring? How's he made? Literally, how was how did God create him? What is whether you do the Enneagram, whether you do strength finders, whether you do disc, whether you either do the elemental profile, do an assessment or remind yourself, do it again in the middle of it so that you start showing, hey, let's start talking about where your strengths are. And let's start yeah. getting really strong on you may lose your job right now. There might be a recession, you might have been laid off right now. But you know what they didn't take away is your strengths and your talents. So yeah. talk about bouncing back and a comeback. Now you're going, oh, okay. I might have had lost a little of my swagger there for a second. <laughs> well, I think the, you know, it's one, I've had a, a couple other guests. We talk about strengths, but I'm in the process of again, reading through Peter Drucker and this oh, yeah. idea of focusing on strengths. And it's not a new phenomenon. It's a forgotten phenomenon. Right. And it's also a, a reminder. And I think it comes back to this idea of understanding who you are, that sometimes we end up in a spot that we're not really meant to be. It's yes. just kind of where we're at right now. Yes. And yeah. the situation that's happened to me, yeah. um, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for some of the very tough situations that I had to endure, you know, getting fired, yeah. you know, going through financial, you know, struggles, okay. whatever, being in a situation like, ah, this isn't what I'm supposed to be right. doing, wouldn't have the experiences to know where I'm at now and the opportunity. And mm -hmm. I think that's, as a leader, one, helping other people recognize that, mm -hmm. that it's, you know, an opportunity for them. But if it's yourself saying, okay, what benefit, and I think, you know, so Wonderful. You say that the foundation that yeah. I can start from yep. to then move to. Yes, we're building. So think about this problem. No problems. Starting even before the problem, taking inventory on this. When the problem hits, you're solid. You're locked in on this. Mm -hmm. so you're going, OK, this is coming at me. I didn't forget who I was this time, though. I'm yeah. locked into who I am now. The situation happened, but I didn't change. You know, my, my hard wiring didn't change. I still have this gift I get to offer the world. So don't forget that. To me, that was 
that was one of my biggest struggles through it. Yeah. It's not understanding what value I have. Yes. And forget. that's where from my insecurities yeah. and my confidence got blown up so much right. because I didn't realize what I had to offer to people. Right. And I, I didn't have the the mental training. Right. I didn't have right. the the mentorship. I didn't have it to say, okay, just calm down. Right. Understand the situation and what are you uniquely gifted at and then yes. work from there. You said a right? key thing. You didn't have the mental training. Like, this is why I'm so passionate about this. We are not taught this mental training. I mean, I've been doing this 26 years, so it's so natural to me. But that's why I started my practice in 2008 when no one thought this was cool. And people were yeah. like, what language are you talking? I'm like, this is mental skills training. This is working on your mind. They're like, lady, please. <laughs> Now yeah. people understand this more because they're seeing great leaders, great athletes, great anyone are going and they're starting to seek this and learn it so that they can be better and, and stay more level-headed, sure-footed, and lead at a higher level. So let's – I'm closing my notebook. We're just yeah, having a conversation perfect. here. This is, this is good. Let's take that and, and let's just take that idea of – I believe, you know, whether – coaching youth sports, right? And I coach involved and it's like, I've understood and now realized the best thing that I can do is help athletes feel safe and challenge them yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Meaning go make a mistake. It's okay. I'm, I'm not going to criticize you for the mistake you make. Mm -hmm. Instead, I'm going to you, help you see it as an opportunity to stretch yourself mm -hmm. and understand if it is uncomfortable, how to react. And I think that's the same in, in leadership positions. And yet, sorry, I was. <laughs> that is all my bouncy balls. Literally, a whole glass jar of bouncy balls that literally just shattered all over. <laughs> There's like hundreds of bouncy balls in glass all under my feet. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You just have to bounce back. So just, just, just. There's an element where I want to cut this, but Dar, I really want, because I love you and appreciate you. I think it's, here's, here's, here's what it is. There's a story in this. There are bouncy balls all over, that. literally hundreds of bouncy balls. Just bounce. We're gonna... If nothing else, you'll remember this. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, so let's get back to yeah. athletes okay. and talking about mistakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you drop a jar and it <laughs> breaks and balls go everywhere. Mm -hmm. But instead of getting upset about it, realizing, okay, what can come of this? What value? You're going to have a story to tell now. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I think those are, the, those are the pieces when it comes back to the um, – we talk about being realistic and, and understanding the situation. Yeah, it sucks, right? Mm -hmm. But – I can move forward from here rather than let it weigh me down. Ev and I think if leaders do that with others, they help them build resilience. Yes, yes, yes. Gosh, that's so true. One, you're creating the ability to be agile. You're creating a safe environment that agility is actually how we thrive. And that's how we yeah. greatness happens through agility. And so when something happens and you allow people to, when something happens, you emotionally stay somewhat neutral and not that you don't feel it, not that you don't like yeah. in the middle of a game or in the middle of something at work or like the scenario, something breaks, yeah. whatever happens, you have to just say to yourself like, okay, again, let's embrace the suck. Let's figure out where yeah. this is. How do we stay agile? Because yeah. the greatest delusion we could stay in is that everything's going to go perfect. And everything is going to go as mm -hmm. planned in our life and in business. And yeah. that is the greatest delusion that people have bought into. Do not buy into the delusion of that. What you should buy into is things are going to go wrong. How will we stay agile when they come? It's like when it comes, it's like almost like, wow, this is a, this is actually a situation that I get to start building great again. I, you can't train yeah. without any stress on you. So you can't build the mental resiliency and grit. So this ability when problems come to say, how will I handle it this time? And you won't handle it great every time. But every time you try, it's another rep in. That's why I call this mental fitness. How much do you think mm -hmm. grace plays into it for yourself? Are you just, yeah. 
I, I want you one because hopefully you trust me. Yeah. Like yourself right now. Yeah. Grace, Great. right? Oh, I, first of all, having three strokes, I can't tell you how many stuff, things I've, I dropped sauce, red, tomato. You should probably sauce. just have a, a glass free life. Yeah. Don't, yeah. I be- totally have a glass. But I mean, I dropped it in my kitchen, white, you know, everything. And I had to get to a meeting and there is sauce everywhere. And I looked at it and I go, hmm. well, yeah. I legitimately, there's nothing I could do at this moment. I'll be yeah. back to fix it. It, it, it. It's hard. It's a, but here's the thing, because I've gone through so many things that have happened, it's here, grace and also the power of perspective. Think about this. Okay. Is this the worst thing in the world that if this is the worst thing that's happened to me all day, I drop something yeah. or even, you know, you have a bad meeting or you, you don't get started on the team. You something, even health problems. If you are still here and breathing, you know, you still have another chance. And a majority of the stuff yeah. that bothers us, health is a big thing. But a majority of the stuff, like, you know, your kids don't do something. You you break something. You Something didn't go well at work today. You got annoyed driving home. But if that's the worst thing you had to deal with in perspective of all of life, you're doing damn good. And so gratitude comes into it. Grace mm-hmm. and gratitude, I think, go along with it. Well, and, and I think of like a circumstance is it, it's not, again, tying into the bounce back. It's not what affects you. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it, it's not the, this, uh, the, um, the instance, it's not the event. It's how do you react? Absolutely. Right? You know, Tim Kite is, you know, E plus R equals O and yeah. it's, it's what, however you react to it. And I think whether as a leader or as a coach, it doesn't really matter what happens. Right. Right. It's how do you react? Yeah. Or yeah. when it happens to someone else, how do you react to yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guide them through the process? Mm-hmm. Do you have grace for them? Do you say, okay, here's this opportunity. How can we use this mm-hmm. collectively instead of, I guess, finding a, a pylon effect where it comes back to that. Hey, let's make this a splat rather than a bounce. I love that. I'd never heard of that, but I love it. And what I was, the reason I had the glass thing I was going to show you from, from that was because when you take a bouncy ball, it doesn't splat. It bounces. And honestly, you don't even know which direction it's going to go. Sure. You know, it's, it goes all over the place. That's kind of how life we think we're going to go in this way, but sometimes it could go in another direction. Can you move? Can you go get it? Can you bring it back? You know, the other thing is it's just staying open. The bouncy ball is a metaphor for the harder you bounce it, the higher it goes too. So yeah. all of this is a metaphor for we, we are meant to bounce back. We are not meant to splat. Like, so, but yeah. to, to hear, I think the way I look at that too is a splat is because it's so heavy Whereas when you get your mindset and mental fitness kind of so locked in, you're lighter, you're mentally lighter. So when adversity hits, you bounce and go, bounce and go. A splat is just like so heavy to me. I think of it yeah. that way. So yeah. stay light in your thinking, stay light in your heart, stay light in your emotions. Not that don't, you still take things seriously, but stay light, stay agile. And like the palm tree, Wayne Dyer says, like the palm tree, could bend in 150 mile hour winds and come back up. So stay agile. Let's, I want to take an opportunity and this is in popular media today, right? Sports media, Jessica, Jessica Pagulia, Pagula, Pagula, Jessica Pagula. Okay. uh, The tennis player. Yes. Whose mom, Kim had the heart attack, just found out about it and it happened back in June. (laughs) And one of the articles that I read, and and you know this, you see this in athletes that are on the stage and they're in front of the world performing. And yet no one knows what's going on behind the curtains. And I connectively, that's us every day. People we work with, there's stuff going on behind the curtains. And she shares in an article, I think it was in the the Athletes uh, Tribune, that she goes, I need to talk about this. Yeah. Because I need, it's been bearing. Yes. Yeah. So talk about, you know, going back, we shared that earlier, bearing, but how important is it to discuss what we're going through with others as a process, not to be a victim, but yet 
to help us get through that so it doesn't become this heavy weight to where we can't bounce? Well, it's getting it out and you have to find the right people that you could discuss this with. This is a little bit of a twofold because we've gotten to in some ways where some of the younger generation is like talking about their emotions now, which is so good. But sometimes I'm seeing now the shift where they stay talking about it, uh, anxiety, depression, and they stay sure. in the emotion of it instead of going, okay, we've got to go play now. Like we've got to get back to where's our boy. Mm-hmm. So you could talk about it to where you stay stuck in it because what you focus on, you feel. Sure. So I want to make sure the pendulum gets back to center like everything. But yes, in general, especially like a lot of the athletes I talk to, they need a confined space that they will talk to the right people that they know it is not going to go anywhere. Confidential space, not confined, confidential mm-hmm. space where they can go and it's not going to be shared so they can get it off their chest because if not, anxiety is real, panic attacks are real, things happen. Sure. So yeah. it is important that you find someone to talk about and you can use your life. I mean, I use all my scenarios where I'm like, you know, this is what's been happening. And I have one or two, really two confidants that I could go to. And I say, this is on my heart. I get 24 hours to talk about this, feel it. And then I've got to move forward. I have to. Yeah. So yeah. if I feel better once I get it out and your brain, once it gets it out, it's like, oh, we don't have to fight or flight this. There's, we've talked about it. We've actually heard if we can find a resolution or a solution. And sometimes it's just saying we don't have it. And that's enough to say, okay, we can let it go now. Yeah, and really choose to move forward. And you know, there's there's one piece we go back to grace is talking about gratitude. And I've had a friend share this with me is using gratitude as a weapon. Oh yeah. Oh. You know, being so good. grateful that you know the circumstance had because one, what does this then present as an opportunity? Or mm-hmm. it's building that resilience in yes. me. So if I'm a little bit tougher now, yes. I'm going to be tougher later yes. when some other circumstance yes. occurs. Yeah. Yeah. Gratitude yeah. is gratitude and the power of reframing perspective, all of it. Yeah. You get to shift from especially gratitude. You know, one of the players, when I was so proud of him at an interview, he said, they had lost the game and they said, you know, is it getting hard on you, especially on the road? And he said, at the end of the day, I'm still in the NHL and I get to play the best game in the world with great people. So I'm still grateful. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, you, you allow the, you know, the, I, the greatest opportunity is whatever game we're playing life is to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's a life. Is it work? Is your interaction? I mean, it's a, it's a game. If you can look at it, it's like, all right, mm-hmm. you know, Simon Sinek, you know, the infinite game, oh, yeah. it's this idea, as long as I'm continuing to be in it. And I think the opportunity, whether it's from our personal self or extending out to others mm-hmm. to say, Hey, if we can find the tools so we can bounce back through whatever happens, that's going to help us succeed more in the long yes. term because it's not going to overwhelm us. Yes, absolutely. A thousand percent. That's why learning these tools now helps you. I'm not going to say life's going to get easier, but I am going to say you're going to get better. You're going to get better at life. What the right way to phrase it maybe is it'll help you be more composed. Oh, for sure. Composed compassionate. You think about it, the professional athletes you work with, and it's like, it, it's usually the ones that are most mentally composed, yeah, able to, you know, dig into whatever they need. Mm-hmm. They have composure in the moment. Yep. Those are the ones that usually perform the best. Yes. Emotional agility. I would say composure yeah. in the sports world, we call it, and in leadership, emotional agility. You could yeah. have emotional agility where and neutrality, Neutrality is composure where you're not reacting. You're truly responding in the best way. And so when the event happens, you take a pause and you say, okay, what is this information? What is it asking of me? What do I need to do about this? What's it evoking? And if you just create a little separation from the situation and what you want to do, your E plus R equals O, but it really does help. But that happens from practicing and practice with the little things, practice with the people that are triggering you right in your own home. Yeah. 
Well, and I think, you know, one caution that I think is important is not to be apathetic, Mm. meaning you need to be emotionally in tune Mm -hmm. because if you're emotionally out of tune, we've seen that all over the world where people are just out of touch, they're out of tune, but it's saying I can be empathetic enough to go with you through these emotions, but I don't need to allow the emotions to escalate my own emotions to where now they start to cause conflict. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So what's the best process, you know, in your reframing and and through the process to say, to allow that to happen? I think it's create, it's really learning. And I write a lot about this, about emotional neutrality because emotional neutrality is truly creating that space and understanding what's going on. And you're able to cre- bring the appropriate amount of response, knowledge, intellect to the situation that, yes, you have some empathy around it, but it is also not taking you down where you are so stuck in the, you can't get caught in the whole thing that now you can't lead. So yeah. you have to create that distance with it. Think about it. When I walked into the room of my patients that were, literally just had their legs amputated or they have their skull removed because of swelling in their brain and they're not sure how to get back. I had to empathize for the situation, but I had to create a neutrality where I felt it, but I did not get consumed so much about it that I could not lead them through their most challenging time. Or when a leader or an athlete is coming to me with something very major that's just happened, I I mean, this is 26 years trained as a therapist, but I'm trained to be the calm in the middle of the storm to go, what are we dealing with? What is it that we need to do? I feel for what is going on for them, but I'm not consumed by the situation. Yeah. It's yeah, well, me. And I think that, you know, one of the notes that I made is it's keeping a in touch you know, view emotions, but yet being realistic enough to understand what is the path forward Yeah. instead of being clouded by emotions yes. where you're just trying to say, okay, where's out instead right. of saying, okay, what's the best path forward? Right. And, and by the way, majority of times, if when I ask people, you know, from adversity and what they went through, I would say, would you say that most of that ended up making you better who you are today they're like yeah i said so would you actually change any of it and most would say no most things they'd say no because we do get better through adversity it's Mm -hmm. really you know it's like i think of gino ariama with the yukon girls basketball when they won 111 games and then they finally lost and he goes good not that he wanted them to but he's like it's not realistic to learn this, that you don't win 111 straight anything. That's just not how this goes. Sure. You learn through now. He's like, now it's real. Now, how do you deal with this pain of loss? How do you deal with this feeling of failure or rejection or whatever it is you're interpreting in your head? How do you deal with this? Because this is actually what's really going to help you in in life. I, I think there's an element of that is if you've never faced that adversity in a challenge, yeah. then you don't know what you're made of. Right. And if you don't know what you're made of, usually in that case, those are the ones that struggle the most yeah. in adversity yeah. because it's never been tempered. Right. You never put in the heat to where all of a sudden now I'm challenged. Or, okay. How strong am I? Right. 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 Yeah. If there was, you know, one perspective that you were able to really encourage people to have, what would it be? Mm. I think it would be the ability, all of this is so important, but quickly to be able to reframe situations. If you could reframe things, reframing setbacks, reframing situations, reframe the game, which is really power of perspective, you will be able to then bring in emotional neutrality. You will then be able to have a distance from your emotions a little bit. You'll be able to lead better. You reframe it to realize It's a bad scenario that's happening, but it's not a bad life. It might have been a bad game, but you're not a bad player. You might have had a bad day at work, but you're not a bad leader. As long as you're working on yourself, as long as you're making yourself better every day. The ability to reframe situations to say, is this the worst that it really is? Is this the worst that it really is? 
Yeah. Is this yeah. is this scenario the worst thing I will ever live through in my life? I don't know, but is there a better way? Is this going to make me better? How do I reframe this? And we do live in a world and in a country right here that more often than not, we are blessed more than we are stressed. And stress meaning we interpret our stress, but sure. we are very blessed in this world in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of things that people are going through, and I don't discount that, but I'll reframe things sometimes. Even my third stroke, I said, okay, well, I lost a lot of my speech. I lost my fine motor. I lost my balance. I lost my ability to read. And I was sitting there by myself doing my rehab in summer in Arizona, which is hotter than Haiti. And it's very lonely and isolating. And I thought, well, I may not be able to hold things in my hands the way I want to, but I still have movement in my arms. And I know I'm going to be able to come back as I did before. And even if for some reason I didn't, if this stayed where it was, I still can serve people. It may not be how I want, but I could still serve. And I say this to you today, and I mean this with all my heart, Tyler, that if God never blessed me with another thing, I would, I'm beyond grateful. I'm beyond anything else that happens in my life is like a cherry on top. I still strive for goals that I feel he's calling me to. I still have dreams, but I could stay so grateful in this moment while not getting complacent, but just staying in a state of gratitude. Man, I love it. Dar, it's so great to catch up with you. It's so great to see you. You too. Uh, Excited about your book. I'm excited to be able to have you here chatting about it. Thank you. And I hope everyone gets an opportunity to, to grab it. And what I look at this is it, it's a it's a tool yep. to have in your toolbox. Yep. And it, it's a process to learn yourself. But also, I think the great opportunity is we're all going through something at some point. Yes. Learn the tools, share yes. the tools, embrace the tools. Yes. They're simple tools. This is not a thesis. Yeah. When you're in the middle of it, you don't want a thesis. These are principles, yeah. hands-on. This is, we take complex things, we make them simple, and then we teach them. That's what I do. So take these principles and apply them, and you'll be glad you did the next time something hits. Yes. Dar, thank you so much. Thanks, buddy. One thing that I I know, and, and I've realized this, is, and we talked about it during the episode, and having grace for yourself in a moment and just allowing yourself to say that situation happened. Okay. How can I roll with it? How can I move on? I think as leaders, one of the greatest opportunities we have for others is to guide them through that process instead of piling on, instead of, you know, putting more on people and, and trying to throw out shame. I, I believe this, you don't build emotional, mental resilience by piling on people. You don't just dump them and bury them and bury them and bury them in hope to build resilience. Instead, I believe it's through the practice of empathy, putting your arm and walking through it with people that builds their ability to endure. It's being realistic in the moment. Say, this is the challenge I'm having, whatever it may be. And and we talked about it. Understand what your values and strengths are. If you have your values locked down, if you have a routine in life, no matter what happens, you can continue to work forward. In my Awaken the Leader Within training, I go through the five R's, which are very similar to what, you know, Dar pointed out. It's for the five R's or have a routine. It's a reset. Find a place to reset. Remember or not, is it going to serve you or not? Be realistic and then repeat. Those match up so much with what Dar shares in the art of bouncing back. I surely hope you'll grab the book. As I mentioned in the episode, it's a tool to have in the toolbox to make sure that you're preparing yourself for whenever those situations happen or it's going to happen or those around you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for listening in. Go check out Dar's stuff. She's a wonderful lady who I appreciate having in my life because she's been so good to myself, my wife, Kelly, and I, our family. And I hope you partake in, in her content. Make sure that you support. Uh, it's a great tool book that she's gone through a lot and shares her journey. And I think it's something we can all relate to. Again, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Till next time, have a good one.